Well, good morning, everyone. Time to rise and shine on this Tuesday at 6 a.m. Thanks for joining us. I'm Channing Curtis. And I'm Tim Pham, and the sunshine is certainly shining this morning. <laughs> Meteorologist Thomas Patrick has a live look there at the sunrise. Thomas, it's been great all morning long. We've just mm. been in awe. Yeah, it, it feels like a bit of a moment of zen. So if you wanted a more peaceful start to the day, hey, let the sunrise help you out. At least temperatures are also a bit cooler as well. Feels very refreshing. I was able to open up uh, the windows of my home early on this morning as I was getting ready for work myself. And look at that temperature at 55 degrees. Tell you what, I can't even remember the last time it was that cool to start the day because how many times have we had upper 60s or record 70s for low temperatures? That's been more common than not. But here we go, a cooler start to the day. 50 degrees in Coeur d'Alene and 52 in Pullman as well. And as you wake up and head out the door this morning, we're helping you prepare for your morning commute where you can see a different angle of that sunshine. This is I-90 in Spokane Valley right now near the Argonne exit. You can see traffic is moving smoothly, which is what we like to see here at 602. We'll keep you updated here on Up With Krem if anything slows you down on your morning commute. This morning, we have new details about a growing list of suspects involved with the international kidnapping of a two-year-old Pullman girl. Aaron Ong disappeared after a fishing trip with his toddler. Investigators now believe he fled the country along with his fiance, taking the child to Mexico to avoid returning her to her mother as part of a custody agreement. All three were located more than a month later in Mexico. Now a third person will be indicted in this case. This comes less than a week after Ong and his father, James, were indicted by a federal grand jury. At this time, the person's identity has not been released, but we do know that they face conspiracy to commit and international parental kidnapping charges. U.S. Attorney Vanessa Waldrop said there is no timeline on how soon the third defendant could be arrested. There is another defendant who uh, was listed in the indictment and has been charged, uh, but that information remains under seal pending that defendant's arrest or appearance in federal court. A court order shows Aaron Ong will stay in jail until his trial. His father, James Ong, has a detention hearing scheduled for tomorrow, where we'll learn more if he will be held until the trial as well. This morning, we are less than one month away from the start of a brand new school year, and preparations are already well underway. So this morning, our Brandon T. Jones is joining us live from Yasahara Middle School. So Brandon, as the semester approaches, students are also going to have more access to more sports teams. Yeah, good morning, Tim Channing. Actually, this year, the Spokane Public Schools District is incorporating middle school tackle football into a few of its schools. So a lot of people are excited for that. There's already more than 100 students who are registered for football this upcoming semester. They've got new equipment purchased and now SBS is just having a call out because they need a couple extra coaches to go ahead and step up and apply. There's an active posting on the SBS website with that application. If you're interested in becoming a coach and leading these young students in the right direction, this year there's gonna be two new teams that will serve as a feeder program for North Central and Rogers High. That's four overall middle schools that have access to the teams. Next year, SBS hopes to expand the feeder program to all five local high schools, but for now it's an opportunity to grow and it's something high school coaches in the area are looking forward to. They're also hoping that this can help with the recruitment process in terms of getting new coaches in. And obviously we want to make sure that we have guys that want to be here. Uh, and, you know, they understand that it's not just about them, but it's about the kids. Uh, there's always life lessons, uh, you know, one of those avenues that they can use on through football, what can apply through life. Each middle school team will have three to four coaches on the staff. Yesterday, SBS held its first ever coaching clinic to prepare staff across the district for a new school year. Some of the topics discussed were leadership, medical, and mental performance. So a lot of those coaches also excited for the new school year to start. And if you know anyone or maybe you're interested to apply for one of those middle school coaching positions, again, that application is on the SBS website. But for now, reporting live here in Spokane, Brandon T. Jones, Crimson News.
Time now is 605. Let's take a look at your morning rush. More news in less time. The airport in Wenatchee is set to get a major makeover. Washington Senator Maria Cantwell went to the airport yesterday for the groundbreaking ceremony. The current terminal at the Pangborn Memorial Airport dates back to the 1960s. Federal funding will pay for about half of the $6 million remodel cost. Construction is expected to be complete by next spring. This morning, Spokane firefighters continue investigating two suspicious fires in North Spokane. The first fire started on East Rockwell Avenue at 2.30 in the morning yesterday. That's just a few blocks south of Rogers High School. Firefighters say a shed was set on fire and the flames spread to a nearby garage. Then about 90 minutes later, another fire was reported in a garage a few blocks away. Firefighters believe both fires are arson. At this hour, they are still looking for the person who started the fires. A neighborhood near Hauser Lake got the shock of a lifetime after a tree went down, tearing down power lines with it. Our news partners at the Coeur d'Alene Press report no one was hurt, but the tree did slice through the front wall and window. The crew sent out to remove the tree estimate it was around 120 feet tall. That is a look at your morning rush. So six as we take you outside a very pleasant morning here in Spokane with a little bit of a light and cool breeze. But to our south, there are still some showers and storms ongoing. I've been watching this moving directly over the Blue Mountains. In fact, any kind of lightning strikes are almost hovering the Washington, Oregon state line. It's starting to move over Asotan County. So areas around Asotan, Lewiston, Pomeroy, Clarkston, you might actually get some rain or thunderstorm rumblings within the next hour here as I'm watching this still travel north word into southeastern Washington and north central Idaho. Otherwise, temperatures today will be a bit on the cooler side, at least in terms of this summer, with highs only in the low 80s today.